Hello friends, welcome to Biosumit. So today we learn about glucose uptake by insulin signaling pathway. So first of all, we are checking some normal facts that we all know that insulin is a peptide hormone and the two polypeptide chains are A and B. A consists of 21 amino acid residue and B 30. A 21, B 30 and it's secreted from the beta cells of pancreatic islet cells. And 70% of the pancreatic islet cells are beta cells. So, coming to the main point, that is the glucose uptake by signaling pathway. So, here you can see, this is insulin receptor. Here you can see the two parts, that this is dimer, okay. Two alpha part, you can see, this is alpha, this is alpha, this is beta, this is beta. So, insulin receptor is dimer. The extracellulars are alpha and the transmembrane ones are beta, okay. And this alpha, beta are linked with disulfide bonds and alpha and alpha are also linked with disulfide bonds now this is the outer part and this is the cytosolic part so when insulin binds to the alpha part uh, let me tell you first that insulin binds to alpha part so when insulin binds to alpha part uh, it will release a signal for beta to activate its tyrosine kinase so I am drawing this beta part here now tyrosine kinase means let me tell you kinase means it will phosphorylate something it will phosphorylate something so insulin binds to alpha receptor the beta the tyrosine kinase part of the beta subunit is activated so it will phosphorylated the beta subunits so this is the beta subunits and now it is phosphorylated i am drawing this here now another thing will bind to its phosphorylated part let's say like this okay this is another thing will bind to phosphorylated part of the beta subunit this is called irs irs1 irs means insulin receptor substrate now due to binding to the phosphorylated part and the kinase part it will also get phosphorylated so now the IRS1 is phosphorylated, right? Now this phosphorylated part of the IRS1 will serve, will serve for the binding site for PI3 kinase. So as I tell, kinase is what? It will phosphorylate. So again this phosphor this pi3 kinase will phosphorylate a membrane lipid that is called pip2 so this pi3 kinase is phosphorylating a membrane lipid that is called pip2 so here will be the membrane right this is transmembrane So now PIP2 becomes PIP3. Now this PIP3 that is PIP2 with phosphorylated PIP2 that is PIP3. Let me uh, I am drawing here again. It is the recognition site for another kinase that is pdk1 so pdk1 means sorry pip3 dependent kinase 1 now here you can see that pdk1 k means kinase kinase means it will phosphorylate something so pdk1 will phosphorylate a kt 
okay this will be phospholated and akt is also a kinase so it will phospholylate some other things and with this cascade of mechanisms inside the cells inside the cell there will be cascade of mechanism cascade so what will happen some plasma membrane bound carrier protein will be released or one this is called glucose transporter or glute in short this glutes will be released to cell inside the cell yes cell now remember one thing there are so many glutes like glute 1 glute 2 glute 3 glute 4 so glute 4 only responds to insulin now we are checking from first again so first insulin is binding to other alpha alpha subunit and it will activating the tyrosine kinase side of beta subunits here is the diagram that is phosphorylated part so the phosphorylated part of the beta subunit will attract the irs1 irs1 means insulin receptor substrate and it will be also phosphoryly phosphorylated now this phosphorylated part of I irs1 will attract pi3 kinase kinase means that will phosphorylate something else and it will phosphorylating the pip2 pip2 is a membrane phospholipid now pip2 with phosphorylation becomes pip3 so this is pip3 and this is the recognition site for pdk1 pdk1 means pip3 dependent kinase 1 again kinase that means it will phosphorylate again something so it is phosphorylating akt akt is also kinase and with some other mechanisms with cascade of mechanisms inside the cell remember this is the membrane membrane phospholipid so it is happening inside the cell this is the cytosol part the glucose transporters are recruited and in case of insulin that is glut4 now we will see the what glut4 is doing now after all the mechanisms the glut force are recruited so glut force are transmembrane protein here you can see why it is glut force because we are talking about insulin and pancreas so here the insulin receptor so after this all mechanism glut force are recruiting now in the blood this is the blood and this is cytosol here are insulin molecules uh, i'm sorry glucose molecules are there so it will then come inside the cell so this is how the with, with the mechanisms the help of the mechanisms glucose are allowed to enter the cytosol of the pancreas or, uh, for, uh, with the help of insulin hormone so this is the mechanism so what is happening here the blood glucose level is decreasing because it is entering the cytosol now what happens in case of some diabetic patients for type 1 that is beta cells are not effective they are not they are not making the insulin so that's why this uh, mechanism doesn't work and in case of type 2 or non-insulin dependent diabetes what happens the insulin can't bind here so if something alteration happens uh, within the receptor so it, it can't detect the insulin right so what happens this mechanism will not carry forward and uh, at the end the glut4 will not be recruited and the blood glucose level will be higher why because the glucose can't be allowed inside the cell so this is what happened uh, for type 2 it happens what uh, receptor alteration
so this is what happen in case of type 2 diabetes i hope you have understood the glucose uptake by insulin signaling pathway and how the type 1 or type 2 diabetes happen thank you